Five candidates are vying to replace Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma as the chairperson of the African Union Commission faced off in a live television debate broadcast across the continent last evening. AU headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia was the venue where the five contestants, Amina Mohammed of Kenya, Abdullahi Batili of Senegal, Pelonomi Venson Moitoy of Botswana, Musa Faki Mahamat of Chad and Agapito Mba Mukui of Equatorial Guinea are aiming to be elected in January to replace South Africa's Dlamini Zuma who will be bowing out that month. The AU gave the candidates an opportunity to speak to Africans and present their vision of an integrated, prosperous and peaceful continent. The live audience comprised of members of the African Union Executive Council, African Union Commissioners, members of the Permanent Representatives Committee, invited guests and journalists. Here is how the contestants responded when asked how they intended to deal with free movement of people in the continent. Heads of state and government of the African Union will elect the new chairperson of the African Union Commission at their summit in January 2017. Will it be Honorable Pilonomi Venson Muitoi of Botswana, Honorable Musa Faki Mahamat of Chad, Honorable Mba Mokui of Equatorial Guinea, Honorable Dr. Amina Mohammed of Kenya, or Dr. Abdullahi Batili of Senegal? Watch the Mjadala Africa live debate on the 9th of December 2016. The uh, movement of uh, persons uh, ensures at the very least uh, three objectives. Uh, uh, first of all, the movement of uh, persons uh, ensures or is uh, an engine, if you like, for integration. Uh, the uh, movement of persons uh, goes side by side with the movement of goods and the movement of capital. And so this becomes a, uh, an, an engine for economic uh, uh, growth. Uh, the movement of uh, persons uh, is also a, a factor of, uh, of mixing both uh, human and uh, cultural uh, units. Uh, and so it is uh, a, a cause uh, of, uh, of of unity. Together we stand and separated we fall. We cannot stay together if our friends and brothers cannot cross our borders. By the way, these borders, they were fabricated. It is time for Africa to try to come back to the founding fathers principle of together, standing. We talk a lot about free movement of people. We talk a lot about the young people, but what is the reality? Our young people are still dying, trying to find space and good life in other places. We see that when you want to move from country A to country B in Africa, it's still being very difficult. I appreciate the initiative from the African Union by giving passport to the heads of states and government. With all due respect, I think there is no president that can go to another country and have a problem of visa. It is time that we start giving the passport to the business people, to school children, to all these needed mothers, fathers, brothers. I do not think we have an option. We have to open up our borders. The only way that we'll be able to provide those jobs that we need for those children that have become fertile ground for extremists right, to recruit from the only way we'll be able to beat that is by opening our borders, by making sure that they have the opportunities that they need to work in any country on the continent, to go to school in any country, to live in any of our countries. Right? By doing that, we'll be stronger. Look at the United States. Why is it so strong? If I'm a tech expert, I can move to Silicon Valley, right? and I will have the infrastructure that I need there to actually develop my skills to the highest level possible. If I'm doing something else, if it's agriculture, I'll go to another part of the United States. That's what we need to do for our continent. China has grown because its people can move around. They can invest in any part. They can transfer skills from one part of the country to the other. What about Europe? I was told by an African businessman that why should he invest in Africa? He needs 20 plus visas to travel across our continent. In Europe, he needs one visa to go to 25 countries, right? So if you needed proof, that we actually need to open up our borders. We need to talk to each other. We need to trade with each other. We need to move with each other, right? I'll give you the example of Kwame. 
a Ghanaian student, if we gave him the opportunity, he would actually be able to work in Kenya, to live in Botswana, to get married in Chad, and probably to invest in Senegal, right? He doesn't have that opportunity today. The only opportunity he actually has today is in the confines of that one country called Ghana. The issue of uh, visa arises, the issue of his uh, stay in that country. It is an ongoing uh, tragedy for Africans uh, uh, from all, uh, all, all areas of life uh, in all kinds of conditions. Uh, today, we are talking about uh, uh, setting up a knowledge society on the African continent. How can we have a community of knowledge uh, without actually uh, involving uh, the African diaspora, uh, the researchers, uh, the uh, emeritus, uh, students, uh, the uh, professors uh, who, um, work, who, who work with the, uh, with the business uh, people who are going to ensure that the conditions uh, for the emergence of the conquering bourgeoisie who are going to set up uh, new economies uh, on the continent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot talk about uh, the economy without uh, talking about those who bring about the growth of those economies. Free movement of people, as my colleagues have stated, facilitates movement of goods, it will facilitate trade. But what I would do once elected as chairperson of the, of the union is to encourage member states to adopt policies which would ease regulations that make it impossible to get a visa. Because everything goes back to the visa, as you have said previous speakers say. Because without a visa, then people cannot travel. And therefore, member states would have to try and look at our visa reg uh, regulations, ease those, harmonize policies, to make it possible for Africans to travel through their continent.